My name is Sayed Hasnain, practicing general ophthalmology in Port River, California for 40 years. My presentation, How to Diagnose Glaucoma Confidently in Seconds, is based on my hypothesis that optic disc may be sinking, not cupping in glaucoma. Since this presentation is intended for diagnosing glaucoma based on sinking disc, therefore, to learn more about my hypothesis, you may like to visit my website, asnani.com. However, I would like to mention briefly some important aspects of this hypothesis before I discuss my main subject. There are two important points in thinking this hypothesis. First, the object is thinking in its entirety, not cupping. The term cupping which implies the gradual enlargement of the physiological cup was mistakenly given 150 years ago. Secondly, due to sinking of the optic disc, nerve fibers are being severed, not atrophied. Therefore, glaucoma may not be optic disc neuropathy, but optic disc exotomy. In summary, two important events may be taking place in glaucoma, sinking of the optic disc and severing of the nerve fibers. The question arises, what keeps the optic disc in place in the secular opening? The optic disc is held firmly in place by two main factors. First is the powdered tissue of Elschling, which lies between the secular edge or rim and the optic disc. And secondly, the optic disc is firmly anchored in place by 360 degrees of retinal nerve fibers as roots anchor a tree. Our next question is why the optic disc starts sinking. The optic disc would start sinking due to atrophy of the powder tissue and the atrophy of the powder tissue will occur due to chronic ischemia. Intraocular pressure and systemic blood pressure are two opposing forces. Normally the intraocular pressure should remain lower than the systemic pressure of the powder tissue for its proper perfusion. But if this delicate balance is reversed and the intraocular pressure takes the upper hand, then it will compress the systemic circulation of the powder tissue, resulting in chronic ischemia and its atrophy. This delicate balance will be reversed in two conditions. Either the intraocular pressure is increased due to disease of the eyeball itself, or the systemic pressure supplying the powder tissue is decreased due to poor systemic circulatory problems. In later scenario, in the normal range, intraocular pressure will take the upper hand and act as high intraocular pressure in subjects with poor circulatory problems. Therefore, in both situations, the high and normal range intraocular pressure would cause chronic ischemia and atrophy of the powder tissue. Now I would like to talk about what happens to the nerve fibers as a result of sinking optic disc. The sinking of the optic disc is in fact herniation of the optic disc in the secular canal and therefore a mechanical problem. Due to sinking pre-lambda nerve fibers prior to their entry into lamina cabrosa are stretched and severed again the secular edge. Due to severance of the nerve fibers, the thinning of the retinal nerve fibers layer as is revealed by OCT. Depletion of the nerve fibers results in excavation or empty spaces in the optic disc. Physiological cup gets broken due to excavation and is not truly enlarging. Another important point is that as the nerve fibers are being severed and depleted, there is loss, there is loss of anchorage of the disc which results in further sinking of the disc. This cascade of sinking of the disc and severing of the nerve fibers will become self-propagated until all the nerve fibers are severed. This may be the reason that glaucoma cannot be halted. At the end stage, the entire disc is perished. This is what the histology of the end stage glaucomatous disc reveals and empty 
Now we come to our main subject, how to diagnose glaucoma based on sinking this. It will be quite simple and straightforward. Just determine only one thing, whether the optic disc is sinking or not. Ignore whether the optic disc or its cup is large or small. Just follow the course of blood vessels at the junction of the retina and the optic disc. If the blood vessels crossing the disc margin are straight, then it means that the disc is flushed with the retina and is not sinking. Analogy would be if a man will cover his flesh with the road, then it is not sinking. If the blood vessels appear sloping on the disc, then the sinking of the disc has started and glaucoma has been initiated. Remember one thing only. If there is no sinking of the optic disc, then there is no glaucoma. Now I would like to talk about stages of glaucomatous disc. It is difficult to divide the glaucomatous disc into stages since the disease is gradual and continuous. However, arbitrarily, the glaucomatous disc may be divided into three stages depending on the integrity of the physiological cup. The early stage is defined when the optic disc is noted to be sinking while the physiological cup is still intact. The intermediate stage is defined when the physiological cup becomes broken and is indistinguishable as the excavation of the optic disc is increased due to progressive severing of the nerve fibers. The late glaucomate stage is quite obvious. There is increased kinking of the blood vessels at the superior edge. Further excavation of the optic disc due to loss of nerve fibers and the entire superior opening becomes visible. <coughs> Before I show you the slides of glaucometer disc, I would like to show the features of two normal optic discs, one with a small and other with a large cup. Ignore the size of the optic disc and its cup, whether small or large. Note the color of the entire neuroretinal ring is uniformly pinkish, 360 degrees in both pictures. There is no localized area of pallor. The margins of the cup are well defined and are not broken or notched. The blood vessels crossing the disc margin are straight and there is no sloping or kinking of the blood vessels at the disc margin. These two optic discs do not appear to be sinking, therefore they are normal and not glaucomatous. This is the slide of early and late glaucomatous stage of same patient. I have purposefully selected this patient so that you may appreciate the features of early glaucomatous disc in an established glaucoma subject. You would note that in early glaucomatous disc there is temporal pallor, increased visibility and prominence of underlying border tissue disc area due to thinning of the retinal nerve fiber layer. There is also sloping of the blood vessels on the disc. You would note that despite these findings, there is yet no change in the contour of the original cup. These findings also indicate that the alignment of the physiological cup may not be earliest sign of glaucoma. If in the late glaucomid stage, there is extensive excavation due to severance and loss of nerve fibers, marked kinking of blood vessels at the sclerer edge. The entire sclerer opening becomes visible due to extreme thinning of the retinal nerve fiber layer. Now I would like to show you a few more photographs of early glaucomatous discs. You would note trampal pallor increased visibility of the underlying disc margin area and sloping of the trampal blood vessel. This, despite these findings, the physiological cup is still intact in early stages of glaucoma. These are also early glaucomatous discs. You may appreciate that same pattern is occurring in all these early stage glaucomatous discs. 
these are pictures of intermediate stage. As I have mentioned earlier, arbitrarily the intermediate glaucomate stage is defined when the physiological cup is broken and becomes indistinguishable and confluent. Note in these pictures, the physiological cup is broken and become indistinguishable. There is increased excavation and pallor due to loss of nerve fibers and vasculature. There is disappearance of the smaller blood vessels due to their severance, especially noted in the temple part, giving a characteristic bald appearance. There is nasal shifting of central vessels due to loss of anchorage from severance of temporal fibers. There is also increased sloping and kinking of the blood vessels. This is a slide of late to end stage glaucomatous disc. This marked excavation of the disc due to severance and loss of nerve fibers. There is kinking of the larger vessels at the secular edge. The entire secular opening is visible. In valuation of the optic disc for glaucoma as sinking rather than cupping would provide definitive information in the diagnosis and monitoring of glaucoma. Please evaluate glaucomatous disc as sinking and see the result yourself. You may not need anything else. Thank you very much.